it's not really a big surprise, is it? No, no. I remember a few a few weeks ago when I came on the show, we talked about it already. We knew that Posh was going to get sacked. It was just a matter of when they would announce it, really, when they would find this, an agreement financially for the last year remaining on his contract and his staff, of course. But it was it was never in doubt that he was not going to stay. The the 18 months that he spent at the time were interesting, to say the least. And yet, they won the, the league title last season. But overall, I think the club believed that it was just not good enough over those 18 months, the way he developed that team, the way they played, especially. I mentioned that to you guys before. Yeah. It was supposed to be underwhelming. So it's not, it's not a surprise at all. Mm. Julian, you heard Andy Brassel describing it as a mutual decoupling, which I quite enjoyed. Um, how mutual do you think it was, realistically? I, it was not a 50-50 mutual. I think, I think Poch would have stayed in, in, different con- in a different context, in a different mm. environment. I think he would have liked to stay because he's still ahead of the squad that he has. But it was, it was not really the kind, of, the kind of environment that he liked. And I, think, I don't think he enjoyed the 18 months, really, because there was so much politics. It was a, it's, a, it's a hard dressing room to deal with. But, but he knew that before. But I think when Messi arrived, maybe he made it even more difficult because it's messy and because already you had so many superstars and so many egos. There was the whole kid and Mbappe saga. Will mm. he stay? Will he leave? And I just think that Poch never really got a grip on this dressing room, on the way the team was functioning. So I think it's more the club than him. But overall, I don't think he was very happy there either. Julian, looking at it, I think... Um... Won the title this year, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was with 15 points, which is no no mean achievement, but it looks like 2 nothing up with 45 minutes to go, Benzema's hat-trick, I think that was the final nail in his coffin, was it? Yes, you're right, that the way they were knocked out by Real Madrid at the Bernabeu was, was crazy, and I think that hurt him a lot for his image and for what he was doing at the club, but also, also personally, and I was there that game, and he looked so passive. He looked like he had no reaction. He looked like he didn't know what to do. And I, that was not that was not a good look on him. It's not just his fault they lost that game. But it's also the inability to win away from home. And there's this incredible stat that in the league, in the league that they dominate, in the league that they're by far the best team and the best squad, they didn't win a single away game against the top nine team. So you don't win at Marseille, you don't win at Monaco, you don't win at Lyon. Yeah. Also, you don't win at Nantes, Strasbourg, Rennes, all those... For some of them, good teams, but average teams compared to PSG. And I think you can't, if you're PSG manager, you can't go a season like that with not winning away from home. It's, it's impossible. Julian, last time you came on, we were talking about Kylian Mbappe's influence and, and the power that he has on incoming managers. Does he have a lot of power on outgoing managers as well in that decision? <laughs> he liked Poch. So I don't, I don't think this one was on him. He liked Poch <laughs> a lot. They had a good relationship. Um, but, but that was the thing. I think a lot of the boys liked him. You know, and they liked his staff, they liked Jesus and, and the others. Yeah. It's just, there was something missing. Some of the training sessions were not the best, I was told. So there was there was a few issues, but Killian, Killian liked him and others liked him too. It's just that for the club, this was not where they wanted the team to be. And, and, and again, he was disappointing, especially the style of play and those results that we mentioned away from him. John, before, uh, before I ask you what's next for Poch, what's next for PSG? Is it straightforward? Is Zidane the obvious and natural successor? He is, and he would be. The thing is, he's hard to convince. Yeah. That's the problem right now they have. He would tick all the boxes. He would be perfect, apart from maybe the fact that he's a Marseille-born and bred kid, which... Yeah. You know, they are the arch rivals, but apart from that, he, he's, he's the perfect one, he's the one that you want for that dressing room, especially. But it's hard to convince. I'm being told that it's less and less likely now, although they keep trying and they keep speaking to him, but it's less and less likely. So, you look at other options Christophe Galtier, who won the league with Lille, and now he's at Nice, who's, who's a really good French manager, but again, he is it that quality he's the kind of guy that can go to this club and win the Champions League because this is what we're talking about here he's winning the Champions League they need to yes. pick the one who yep. finally do it not sure I'm not sure Galtier is mm. he's oh, just back to Poch an exceptional coach we know we know that because we've watched teams that he's developed and, and improved and getting Spurs to a Champions League final is, is no mean feat you know that's that's impressive in, on its own do you think that this has damaged his reputation and, and where do you think 
would be a logical step for him. Can he go up again or does he have to go sideways or backwards? <laughs> but I think you said a very important word, Laura, in developing. Mm. This is what he's really good at. This, this PSG team didn't need development. They, 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 they were there before. You've got Neymar and Mbappé and Messi up front. Mm. This is not a de development or developing project. And I think that's where he struggled. I think if you if you own a team or if you look for a manager that needs that, that needs that kind of coaching, develop, the development side of things, he will be perfect. But, but, but yeah, the people from the industry will know that this is not just on him. So he can't, that can't tarnish how good of a manager he is because many have struggled before and, and, and after they went on and, and won big things like Unai Emery and like Thomas Tuchel. So it's not just on him. So I think maybe if you're a fan from the outside and you don't listen to our show, you won't know. But now if you listen to our show, you will know it's not just on him. But I think he wants to come back to England. His wife and, and his two boys, their two boys are, are here, of course. Okay. So I think the natural thing for him is to come back to the Premier League, which is the league that he prefers anyway, even more, I think, than La Liga. I'm just not sure there, there is right now a job or very soon a job that he would like, because if you look at all the top six, this is all taken now. Will he go below top six? I think he's a top six manager now easily in the Premier League. So I don't know. It's hard to think. I think that Carlo will have, Carlo Ancelotti will have another season at Real Madrid and then they can give it to Poch. Ah, you, interesting. Yeah, I've got, I've got to ask you, my friend. Um, I stuck my neck out months ago and said <laughs> France would win the World Cup. However, <laughs> however, Julian, I have to ask you, looking at current form in the Nations League, a, a reasonable game, a big game tonight against Croatia at home, yeah. but you're sitting with two points after three games. I mean, that's <laughs> Scottish form, Julian. <laughs> or English form. Yeah, I was going to say. It's <laughs> British. Um, it's, it's, uh, just quickly, I mean, yes, they've struggled, and I think because it's so late in the season, so many games, they have changed everything the formation the players which which all the managers really do and that's why they're all struggling belgium england yeah spain not so much maybe they're the only one but it's difficult really difficult so i don't think we should look too much into it but you're right there's a few things griezmann's form has been poor yeah. let's sort that out or drop him and and, and start and Kunku, for example the defense has been a little bit struggling let's make sure that especially when Varan is not there, that we can find some solidity somewhere. But d don't worry, you can still put your mortgage on France winning the World Cup. That'll do it for me. That's what I wanted to hear, my friend. Are you a France fan now, Ali, rather than England? <laughs> Always, been bet, Always been a France fan. Always been a France fan. You know that. <laughs> uh, Julian, as always, fabulous. Thank you so much. Have That's a good day, mate. Really clear. Thank show. you. Have a yeah. wonderful right. day. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.